So here's the thing. I'm, um, it's India Morgan is, is our speaker. Her name is India Morgan on the uh, Deborah. It's on, and I can change it. Hey, hey, Carney, I'm going to change your name. She's on mute, but she's in here, but it's not under her name. Okay, so I've let all the attendees into the meeting. Hello, attendees. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Good hello, evening. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Oh, welcome. Hello. Hello. Oh, look at the beautiful face. Hey, hey, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hi. Good afternoon, ladies. Oh, it's 6.03, ladies. Shall we begin or give it one more minute? Why don't we give it a couple of more minutes? Um, we were expecting almost 200 people, so let's give it a few more minutes. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Soros ladies and hopefully gentlemen. My name is Carolyn Lake and on behalf of the Economic and Development Committee of the Stone Mountain Lithonia Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to tonight's seminar, Hit the Jackpot in 2021, Move from Renting to Home Ownership. A recent statistic from Harvard University's Joint Center for Housing Studies indicates that approximately 67% of renters would actually prefer to own their own home. Well, there's no surprise there, right? But if that's you, our intention is that you walk away tonight with some information and resources that will move you another step closer to reaching your goal. As a full-time realtor, I want you to know that what you've heard about the market and this being a great time to purchase a home is absolutely true. Interest rates are at historic lows, so your money will actually buy more home. You've probably also heard that there is a, a low inventory of available homes for sale, and that is also very true. It's a very competitive market but I want you to know the investment of time you're making tonight will, to become an educated buyer will absolutely give you an advantage when you're ready to purchase your dream home. The session tonight will last about 90 minutes and then we've, um, we have 30 minutes at the end for your questions. Please um, send your questions in advance using the chat function at the bottom of your screen or as they occur to you. And if you're willing, please also leave your cameras on so that our speakers can see your lovely smiling faces. Now, I'll hand it off to the co-chair of our committee, Sora Virchel Frazier, to introduce our speaker. Hello, everyone, and good night, and thank you all for joining. Good evening, and thank you all for joining. Who is Carney Mahoney? Carney Mahoney is the founder and executive director of Morningstar Urban Development, a nonprofit community-based organization and a HUD-approved housing agency. Her motto, make it happen. I love that. She focuses her efforts on helping to build 
healthy communities that create economic opportunities for low to moderate income families through home ownership. She is a widely sought after speaker because of her expertise in real estate and mortgage industry. She holds a BA degree in biblical studies and Christian counseling. She has over 23 years of real estate experience as a real estate agent, as well as a broker. She holds multiple industry certifications, is a finance coach and a licensed Christian counselor. She is a broker owner of Morningstar Realty Group, Mahoney and Associates LLC, and the founder of Morningstar Development of Georgia. She serves on several community and advisory boards in Atlanta for the Neighborhood Development Partnership. Among other things, she has many awards uh, awarded to her, for example, the Atlanta Business Chronicle, the DeKalb and the Northeast Georgia Million Dollar Agent Award, and most recently, the 2019 Nonprofit Trinity Award for her service and leadership to others. I need someone to put in the chat, owner, owner. Can someone do that for me? Type the word owner. Yes, all right, I'm seeing it. I need someone to put in the chat, expert, expert. Can I see that? Oh yes, I see it. Last but not least, I need someone to put in the chat, service, service, service to others is what she does through her efforts and her foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our speaker for the evening, Ms. Kearney Mahoney. You're on mute. Can you hear me now? Okay, great. I was just saying hello and God bless you. And I'm so glad to see so many beautiful ladies online. And it is my pleasure to be here with you tonight. I'm hoping that we can actually get some new homeowners out of this and help to spread economic wealth, right? All right. So um, I'm going to start my presentation. If you could... Um, Allow me to share my screen. Okay. All right, can everyone see it? Okay. So we first of all wanna welcome you all here. Glad to be with the Delta Sigma Theta sorority, uh, the Lithonia chapter. And we're glad that you all are able to take a part of this this evening. We've gone through who I am. Um, thanks for the introduction, uh, Rochelle. We really appreciate you and Carolyn hosting this tonight. Oh, can you see it? Can everyone see my screen? Yes, yes we can okay, see your perfect. screen. All right. All right. So the agenda tonight, we've already had our welcome. We've had the speaker introduction. And now we're going to talk about making the case for home ownership. And then of course, we'll get through to all the way through the, to the um, closing remarks. Hopefully you can hold your questions until then. All right, let's get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. Why is home ownership important? We're getting ready to make the case. Are you excited? All right, we're gonna talk about the benefits. Why home ownership? Home ownership is an important vehicle in creating economic stability and opportunity for American households and it is the best way to accumulate wealth and it's the a family's most greatest asset. We're gonna to learn tonight about how it's a tool. What it helps us to do is make consistent payments. When we do that, it leads to improved credit scores. It helps greater financial stability. It helps us to be able to use this as a tool for retirement and as a financial tool to do many endeavors. The how, once you own a home, you can use it for so many different ways. And it's, it's the best investment one can make in a lifetime. And of course, it's the greatest investment. So we wanna talk about the other benefits. 
When homeownership is undertaken, it improves the lives of owners and their families. It helps to boost the economy and it also helps in job creation. And it also uh, helps with consumer expenditures. If you all uh, notice that during the pandemic, home, um, home improvements start to increase. People started to do things to their homes. And as they begin to do things to their homes, it causes the values of their homes to go up. And you start to see homes to get put on the market. And of course, those of us or those of uh, you all that might be in the market for home ownership, you're looking at what Carolyn said earlier, that there's, a, uh, there's not much inventory. And one of the reasons is because people are doing these consumer expenditures to help them to get their house in order for it to go on the market because people are moving up now. Home ownership and home improvements are significant portions of the US economy. In fact, if it had not been for that during the pandemic, we don't probably know how this economic situation would have ended. And as you can see in um, 2018, Nearly $400 billion was spent by residential property owners modifying, improving, and upgrading their homes. And statistics show that the quality of life improves for all Americans and their children when people own their own homes. It is statistically proven that kids are better in school because they're stable. People are less stressed at work because they're stable. And so with that being said, home ownership helps the economy and it helps the overall health of American families. What are the other benefits? Number one, it builds wealth. You purchase a home for $100,000 today and tomorrow it might be worth 150,000. So it helps to build wealth. It's a great tax savings. It helps you to be able to have write-offs when you're making home improvements and when you're using home equity lines of credit. It helps you to be able to write off the interest and the taxes. And then you have the pride of home ownership. You can put flowers in your home yard. You can, you can make it as beautiful as you want to. You can paint it any color you want to. And it's the pride of home ownership. You can put flowers on the porch and rocking chairs. It just gives you great pride and sense of pride when you own your own home. And then let's look at it by way of security. It gives you a secure future because you don't have to worry about the roof over your head as long as you're taking care of it, right? And it helps you to build good credit. Everybody knows that when a mortgage is on your credit report, it makes those credit scores soar, especially when it's being paid on time. So it helps you to build good credit. Now, as we're making this case, let's talk about home ownership and the disparity that is done by race. As many of you all have heard, black home ownership is one of the lowest among all races. 44% of black households are homeowners in comparisons to 73% of white households. 12.63, um, 63% of mortgage denial rates for black buyers simply because of the color of their skin, simply because it doesn't matter what job they have, how much education they have, it's just the fact that they are black there's disparities and it caused people to have been denied mortgage rates or denial um, home ownership in the past in comparison to 6.15% of our counterparts that have mortgage denial rates. And a lot of times this goes beyond just the credit. There's a uh, medium household net worth among black households is $12,780 compared to $139,300 of the medium household worth for our white counterparts. That is a great disparity that has to be a gap that has to be bridged in order for us to achieve this. And how we achieve this is making more African Americans, Black Americans, homeowners. 52% less appreciation for a typical household in red line neighborhoods. And those of you that know what red line means is basically a neighborhood that they basically literally drawn a line around to say, hey, we're not gonna allow the values to go up. We're not gonna allow the um, home ownership, uh, uh, we're gonna give them high interest rate. We're not gonna allow them to go but a certain 
part beyond this red line. And so that is something that we don't have to contend with with a lot anymore, but yet it still exists in reference to green line areas. And then you see that 80 times of our counterparts are 80 times more likely to become householders homeowners and have a higher net worth than um, black counterparts. And also, even with renters, they outdo us when it comes to net worth. When we look at this chart for 2019 and 2020, and if you look, start from the left of your screen and go toward the right, you can see where there's greater disparities. And it's shown here in the year 2020 and 2019, according to quarters. And if you see there's only one quarter, if you look at the green, in quarter three of 2019, where black ownership actually outdid precipitors or Asian Americans. As you see in this chart, home ownership among black Americans is all at an all time low. And with that being said, we have to get on board bridging that gap to help us to generate more economic wealth among Black Americans. It is a must. And the best way to do that, in fact, one of the only ways to do it is through home ownership. Now, when we look at home ownership by age, 82% of what is called the silent generation born between 1925 and 1945 are homeowners. These are people that at this moment in time probably own their homes outright. When you look at baby boomers, boomers born between 1946 and 1964 that are homeowners, 78%. The thing about baby boomer, boomers though, a lot of them are still paying off their homes. 60% of Gen X, 1965 to 1979 are homeowners. And here's the biggest gap. It's right here with the millennials. We got to get them on board for home ownership. They're college graduates. They are smart. They're making more money than the baby boomers did and the silent generation. But yet they do not own their own homes. We've got to get them on board. And another thing about millennials, a lot of them are still at home with the baby boomers. Got to get them out of there and help them to feed the economy a little bit better by owning their own home. All right, let's talk about, are you ready for home ownership? This is one of my favorite topics to talk about because home ownership is where it's at. That's the best way to improve communities, amen. All right, what are the advantages? Tax benefits, equity. You build equity over a long period of time. You might buy that house at $100,000, sell it for $200,000. Bought my first home for $62,500, sold it for $123,000 10 years later. Home ownership is the best investment one can make, especially if you want a great return on your money. It's freedom over your environment. You get to do what you want to do. You can act like Martin and tell people to get to step in if you want to. You just got to be able to first get your foot in the door. And what that does is that you can paint your house purple, actually sold the purple house once. You can paint it pink if you want to. You can do whatever you want to do when you have your own home. And guess what? With freedom over your environment, you can control who lives there and who doesn't. But what are the disadvantages of home ownership? Can't talk about the advantages without talking about the disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is the monthly cost. There are higher costs with owning a home, but guess what? It still gives you that pride of home ownership and it's worth every bit of it. You have to maintain the property now. You can't call the maintenance man and tell him that the pipes are leaking. You can't call the maintenance man and ask for an air conditioning repair. These expenses have to come out of your own pocket and you have to determine whether or not it is worth it for you. Because even though we're talking about making the case for home ownership, it is not for everybody. And there's fewer features that are included. And it's also de decreased mobility. Now, where you might be in an apartment complex and you have a pool and you have a gymnasium, might not get that where you live because it call, it's called HOAs or homeowner associations. It's going to cost you more to get those amenities or those features. And then you can't pick up and move when you get ready. 
Now, if you're going to purchase a home, you need to be plan on staying there for a few years because of the fact that just because you don't like it, it is not that easy to move. And that's what we mean by de decreased mobility. All right, let's talk about the responsibility of home ownership. On time mortgage payments, it helps to improve your credit. Now you're going to have what they call property taxes, and they go up every year. And that's good because as they go up, you know that the value of your home is going up. And you have insurance. You have to pay for that yourself. And then you have repairs and maintenance. Also, you have to purchase your own appliances and equipment. Keep in mind, again, like we just said, one of the disadvantages is, is that you can't call the maintenance man to fix these things. And if the refrigerator breaks down, you have to be the one to replace it. So that's a great responsibility and you have to determine is it worth you taking that leap to home ownership all right here's some things to start thinking about a lot of things that you might do now you might go shopping you might go on vacations you might can buy an outfit every week you have to think about whether or not those things are worth you giving up you might not have to give them all up you might can't do it every time you want to do it but you have to think about if those things are worth giving up for home ownership. You got to think about how are you going to come across this down payment that's needed? And you got to think about those monthly payments. Are they going to be higher or are they going to be lower than where you are now? Let's dig a little deeper. Let's talk about the purchase costs for home ownership. Loan fees, credit report fees the appraisal fee, earnest money deposit, and the down payment. That's one of the things that we talk about before we can get you on this road to home ownership. Got to take all of that into consideration and think about how you're going to pay for all of these items. And last but not least is closing costs. You're going to have principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And here's one thing that I can say. People always ask me, well, are, is my mortgage payment going to be fixed? Yes, it is. But the taxes and insurance can go up. So that's what makes the mortgage payment go up. But guess what? It's still worth it for home ownership and opposed to it's going up every year. Some years it might even decrease. You got to have mortgage insurance. The mortgage insurance is to protect the lender in case of foreclosure or in case of default. And guess what? They make you pay for it. So it's a cost that you have to consider when you're getting ready to purchase a home. And basically that has to do with the type of loan that you get, but we're not going to talk about that quite yet. Then one of the things that you have to also consider, and this is an upfront fee, you got to consider what is it going to cost to move. Now, if you've been in a place that you have been preparing for home ownership and you're just buying things and stacking them up, well, somebody's got to move them. <laughs> so you got to have some moving expenses um, calculated into those costs. And one of the things that you must have, you should always consider, even, even if you're not going to buy a home, is having an emergency savings fund. You always got to prepare. My mom used to say, prepare for war in the time of peace. You got to always prepare for those emergency situations that might arise, all right? And sometimes they arise as soon as you move in the house, but guess what? Again, it's worth it. Now, I hope I'm not going too fast, but we're gonna get into the professionals in the home buying process. Listen, you need a team of professionals working for you and you need to know who your team is and what they consist of. Number one is you need a housing counselor. That's kind of what I do. What we do is assist you with the process and the barriers to home ownership. We talked about all the things that we just talked about, the loan costs, the down payment, any fees that might be associated. We talked to you about your credit and getting you prepared on how you need to, what credit score you need to have and how to get up to that credit score. We talked to you about the right loan product, even before you get the next person involved, which is your real estate agent. The real estate agent is going to assist you with your home selection and the contract. And here's the thing, and this is what you must know, that's the real estate agent's job. Now, I'm going to share some other 
uh, members of the team, and I'm going to explain it as, 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 as quickly as possible, but as in depth as possible as I can. The housing counselor is needed because of the fact that they do just about everything that a loan officer would do. A loan officer is the next person. They call them the loan originator. They're the person that originate the loan for you. They're the person that you give all of your information to, your paycheck stubs, your bank statements. Uh, you uh, give that to them, your income taxes, so that they'll know what kind of income you have to purchase this home. So they're going to assist you with obtaining funds for the home. Now, the first, those first three people are very important because all of them is what's going to get you on the road to home ownership. All right. That housing counselor is going to look at those documents, the same documents that the loan officer is going to look at, and they're going to give you the best advice possible. And then you're going to get your real estate agent because normally that real estate agent has a loan originator that they work with and that want you to go to. And so you're going to get them involved next. And a lot of times we do these things out of sync. But a lot of times people don't think about that there is a housing counselor available for you to go to to advise you correctly. The next person would be the closing attorney that's going to assist with the contracts if there's any disputes as far as title is concerned when you're purchasing that home. And they're going to hold the earnest money for you and their contract, and they're going to support the process that get you to the closing attorney. Now, the, again, the most important people on your team is the first three, the housing counselor, the real estate agent, and the loan originator. All right. The other people on your team will be the title insurance officer. This is somebody you'll probably never meet, but they're the one that's gonna do the research of the, of the title on the property to make sure that there are no other liens and encumbrances on the property. That when at the time of closing, that property is gonna be transferred to you free and clear and with no problems that you're gonna be able to foresee as far as ownership is in the future. You're gonna have a home inspector. That home inspector, is going to be probably after the other three, the next important person. The reason being is because they're gonna look at that house from top to bottom, from the, from the attic down to the foundation to make sure that there's no issues concerning their house. And if it is, that they be addressed before you get to that closed table. So you definitely want the home inspector on your team. Listen, that home inspector do not need to be Uncle Joe. And it don't need to be your brother, John. It needs to be a qualified professional that inspects that house, okay? I don't care if they do home repairs or what they do. You make sure you get somebody that is qualified to inspect that home, all right? Then the next person is the appraisal. They're important person on your team simply because you want to make sure that the house is valued at the price that you're saying that you want to pay for it. So they're the one that gives an estimate on the value to make sure that if you're paying 250,000, it's worth the 250,000. All right. Now the surveyor is only needed when you need, when you are purchasing land. I put them in here because a lot of times people say they want a big yard and they always want to put a fence up. That surveyor is going to establish your property lines. So that surveyor is very important. Now in Georgia, you don't need a survey. It's not mandatory, but it is needed if you're going to purchase land or if you're going to put a fence around the backyard or the entire yard. So that, is, that surveyor is a part of your team. The next person is the insurance agent. The insurance agent is going to assist with protecting your home from liability and casualty. They're going to make sure that you have enough insurance that if anything happens to that house, burn down, fire, theft, that it is protected. And I always tell people that the moment they get under contract with the real estate agent, to go ahead and call that insurance agent and find out what that insurance policy is going to cost you and to find out how much you need to have it insured for. All right, moving on. Ready to buy a home? Just missing the down payment. That's what we need, right? I'll tell you all about it after the prize giveaway. <laughs> all right, perfect timing. I'm ready to go buy another house. Let's go. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for this amazing information. But in the meantime, yes, it's prize time. So I will share my screen.
And we did have, um, see? We've had over 250 folks register for our event today. So we see that we still have plenty of people um, joining and we're going to take names. You must be present to win. So we'll look for the folks who are with names we call to make sure that you're here, but everybody get ready. First prize. And our winner is LaShawn M. LaShawn M is our first winner. We have an e-gift card for you. Thank you so much for joining. Is LaShawn M present? LaShawn M is present. LaShawn Martin. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that verification. Okay, let's go to our second prize. We'll take LaShawn off and next. Sonia E. Sonia E is our next winner. Is Sonia E with us today? Yes. Woohoo. Woo <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> we have two, we have a $25 e-gift card for each one of you. And we appreciate you all being here. We're going to give out some more prizes to at the end. So you all hang on and keep getting some of this wonderful information and some prizes a little later. All right, and now back to Ms. Mahone so we can learn some more awesome information. Okay, so congratulations to the winners. All right, let's get to the next part. Down payment money is available, but you gotta see if you're eligible. So the down payment programs are Georgia Dream, where you can get $5,000 to $7,500. DeKalb and Gwinnett, anywhere from $5,000 to $8,000. And Invest Atlanta, if you want to live into the, in the city of Atlanta, you can get up to $40,000. And you need it in the city of Atlanta. OK. When it comes to borrow for qualifications, you're going to have to have this house as your primary residence. You must live in it. Cannot be an investment property and you cannot be purchasing it to be an investment property. I know people have all kinds of ways of getting around things, but when it comes to down payment assistance, it must be your primary residence. You must live in it, all right? There are household income requirements, which means you have to go up to a certain amount. They all go up to a certain amount. We'll go over that in a little bit. And you must be a first time home buyer basically means that you have not owned a property in the last three years, or you cannot have owned another property at the time of closing. And what that means is you can't be on anybody's title. Um, sometimes people are on title, but they don't necessarily own the home. They just was on title, but they still don't want to see that. So at the time of closing, you must not be on title on any other house and have not owned a home in the last three years. There are exceptions. There are exceptions such as if you had been divorced and owned a home with your husband and you got divorced, they will allow you to be a first time homeowner, but you have to make uh, present paperwork for that to happen, but it can happen. All right. All of them are county area restricted, which basically means that they only cover a certain area. So if it's the cab, it's the cab. If it's Gwinnett, it's Gwinnett. And the city of Atlanta is majority Fulton. So, and of course, all of the different cities that are involved in there. You must have a minimum contribution of $1,000 to $1,500 of your own funds. Now, that could be your earnest money. It could be your home inspection money. It could be your appraisal fee, your credit report fee. Any of those fees count toward that $1,000 to $1,500, okay? So, it has to be your own funds. 
you must attend a HUD certified um, home buyer education class up to eight hours. I know people think it's eight hours, but HUD never said that. HUD says that it has to be a class that's certified by a certified housing counselor. And with that being said, it's up to eight hours. It's so much information. You pretty much need the whole eight hours to get, in, uh, get it all in, but you must attend it, okay? And there's a required credit score for every down payment assistance program, and you must have some type of credit history, okay? And each one of them, you must use their participating lenders. Now, let me just share with you with this. That's where a lot of people get in trouble with. They want the down payment assistance, but they go to a lender that's not participating in the down payment program that they're seeking after. They all have their own list of lenders. So when you get to that real estate agent and they're going to tell you to go with one of their lenders, make sure you, number one, let it be known that you want down payment assistance. And number two, find out if that lender is a participant on the, on the down payment assistance program list. All right, they have household income limits. There are debt to income limits as well, which basically means that your payment, your mortgage payment and the amount of debt that you're in has to meet that program's criteria, okay? And they normally want you to have at least two months minimum or and up to 10,000 maximum of savings. Now, listen, when you get over to $10,000, then you might not qualify for down payment assistance because they might feel like you can um, contribute to your own down payment. But there are ways around it. We'll talk about that in, on another session. And there's no exceptions. These down payment assistance programs mean what they, mean, what they say and they say what they mean and you have to meet them accordingly, okay? All right. There's maximum purchase price limitations. We'll talk about that in a minute, that you can go up to a certain dollar amount. There are geographical limitations. Again, county specific, certain neighborhoods. They have what they call LMIs, which is low to moderate income neighborhoods. They have certain census tracts that they will give you more money in. So those things are questions that have to be asked and identified at the time of you seeking out down payment assistance, all right? Now, all of them want it to be a single family home. However, it can be a condo, it can be a town home, and you can purchase a duplex or a fourplex, believe it or not, as long as you're going to live in one of them. As long as you live in one of them, you can even get a government loan to purchase it. And you can rent out the other unit or the other three units, but you must live in one as your primary residence. You can buy newly constructed or existing. And some are second liens, which basically means that they are give you the money up front, but they hold it in second position as a lien in the event that you want to refinance or move out of the home later. And the reason why they do that is so that they can fund the, the home, the down payment assistance program, number one. Number two, they want you to stay in the home because they know that home ownership helps to, to um, stabilize communities. And so they want homeowners in there, which is why they would give you the help up front. It'll be a second lien, but it's a solid second. And as long as you stay in the home, doesn't have to pay it back. The funds can run out at any time. And the only one that does not run out is the Georgia Dream. Okay, is it prize giveaway again? Well, we can yes. do another one. We were, uh, we're ready. Ready do number you th all are. Okay, number three and four, or just three. Um, number three and four is what I have. Okay, let's go. <laughs> all right, so I'll share my screen. Okay, good. All right, and we're ready for our next prizes, three and four, here we go.
Andrea T. Andrea T is our big winner. Is Andrea T present and with us? We're looking for Andrea. Come Andrea, on, Andrea. Mayman. Andrea, are you here? We want to. We want to bless you. All right. Well, we'll try I'm again. Andrea B, but I don't know if I don't know if there's another Andrea on the line. <laughs> and I'm an Andrea P. <laughs> So I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, wow. So wonderful name, ladies. We like your name. <laughs> but yep, I think we'll keep trying since we have T and we did use the way we registered. So we'll give her a go, give it a go. All right, big money, big money, big money. All right. Aaron J. Is Sharon J with us? Yes, I am. All right, Miss Sharon. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you for being here. And for our fourth and final winner. Nakina. Nakina C, did I say that correctly? Is Nakina with us? No, it's not with us. Oh, all right. Well, that's why we've got all the names present to win. That's okay. One more time. Is it Deborah or Deborah? Deborah E or Deborah E? Deborah E is not here, but Deborah M will take it. <laughs> <laughs> See, and then I'd have to do a go back on my Andreas. So <laughs> we I gotta be consistent. To again. I think we need to spend one more time. One more time. I'm absolutely there with you. Here we go. <laughs> I say Deborah M deserves it. <laughs> well, we definitely appreciate the boy M. We may have to do a little more. <laughs> All right, Lori W. Come on, Lori W. Are you our big winner? Laura. Oh, no. Lori. 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 Well, okay. Next time's a charm. Good thing this is quick. All right, Tawana H. Tawana H in the house. We see Tawana. Tawana, no. Tawana. Oh. <laughs> We were on a winning streak. What happened? All righty. Here we go. Hello? Hello, Did I say that correctly? Anywhere. I don't hear any hands up. No one claiming that one. Wow. Where did everybody go? Okay, let's see. Give it another go. Lamisha, Lamisha D. See, I could spin all night, but we want to get to some more good information. So, <laughs> Lamisha is not present. Lamisha is not present. Alrighty. Did you say Lamisha or Jordan? Because yes. they kind of sound the same. Lamisha. This was not Jordan, but uh, Lamisha. <laughs> That's right. 
Good try, Clarissa M. Clarissa, Clarissa. Where did everybody go? Present. Did I hear a present? She's not present. She's not present, okay. All right, one more good time and then we'll move forward. If we have another one towards the end, we'll come back. Is that fair? Al Tanika G. Any luck? All right. Well, Carney, we're going to move forward no and worries. let you continue teaching us. And if we have some time, we'll give one more way a, a little later. Okay. Great names, though. Great names. All right. We're going to talk about the Down Payment Assistance Program. All right. Most of the programs have limited funding each year. They require an FHA loan, which is insured by the federal government. Now, there are some that, that will allow for other loan types, but they all are credit score driven, okay? Let's talk about the Georgia Dream State Program, and it covers all of Georgia. They had a great program. Um, we're hoping that they're going to bring it back. Uh, it only covered certain areas, but it was a lot of money. It was like $15,000, and it was a grant and didn't have to be paid back as long as you stay in the house for five years. The standard Georgia dream, all eligible home buyers qualify for at least the $5,000, okay? And if you are an employee of uh, public protection, military, healthcare field, or education, you qualify up to $7,500. And so a lot of people take advantage of the Georgia Dream program because of the fact that it basically allows anyone to be a part of it, all right? Then you have that it's an FHA loan. It's Again, it's, it's government loan. It's a silent second, and it's used in conjunction with a Georgia Dream first mortgage loan. Keep in mind, it, it must be a participating lender, okay? And that particular participating lender is the one that you qualify with first you'll go through be qualified you'll be approved and then they package that loan up send it to georgia dream and then they do a separate underwriting and it gives you the, the down payment assistance that is is a silent second mortgage as long as you stay in the home don't have to pay it back and you must contribute at least $1,000 to the purchase transaction. Most of the time that's taken care of when you give your earnest money or your home inspection or appraisal fee, all right? Let's talk about Invest Atlanta. It's a great program, absolutely great program if you're gonna be living in the city of Atlanta, okay? It's a 30 year fixed interest rate is up to three and a half percent or $40,000. Again, it's city of Atlanta only, and it's a 3.5% grant, which basically means you don't have to pay it back as long as you stay in the house and meet the other guidelines. It can be FHA or VA, and they are the only loans that they'll take, all right? And you must qualify for the first mortgage with a participating lender. Keep in mind, the lender must participate in these um, down payment assistance program and keep in mind that not, not all lenders do, all right? You must contribute $1,500 of your own funds toward the closing costs. Again, it, appraisal fee, earnest money, home inspection fee, all counts toward that $1,500, all right? The property must be located within the city limits of Atlanta. And you have to check to see again, if your lender qualifies. And it is a zip code lookup. There's the website that you can look for, take a snapshot of it real quick, because if you click on that link, 
put in the address that you're in, of the house that you're interested in, it will tell you whether or not it qualifies for the Invest Atlanta program. Okay, so keep in mind it's mapatl.gov, Atlanta, Georgia, GA.gov. Okay, let's talk about We the Cab. Fantastic program. It was originated for to get people to come work in the cab and live in the cab. It is a great program because it also accepts conventional loans. And a lot of people that have student loans might not qualify for FHA, but they can qualify for conventional. And a lot of the programs don't allow FHA programs. I mean, FHA, I'm sorry, conventional um, loans, but this one does. All right, you can get a grant of three, four, or 5% of the total loan amount. And guess what? It's forgiven at the table. So you don't have to have that hanging over your head as far as a second lien. You don't have to worry about uh, having to stay in the house three to five years. It's forgiven at the table because all they want you to do is come and live in the cab. There's no first time home buyer requirement. This is the one program that does not care about the three years of you not owning a home. You can actually have owned a home in the last year and still be able to get this down payment assistance program. All right. This one have higher income limits. So more people qualify for this one all because they want to live or move to the cab. And it has higher debt to income ratios, which means that it allow you to have a little bit higher of what we call a back end, a little bit more debt that you might be in, but they will allow it uh, just so that they can help you to become a homeowner. All right. Some of the other things about we the cab is that it's not exclusive to home buyers who work in the cab, but it's anybody who's interested in buying in the cab county. So if you live somewhere else right now, but you want to move to the cab, you qualify for this program. And it's a non repayable grant. That's awesome. All right. Let's talk about Gwinnett County. Woo, that's where I live. <laughs> the home stretch program. What I like about Gwinnett County's uh, down payment program is that it, you can have FHA, VA, or conventional. And guess what? Doesn't matter about the lender. You can actually have any lender for this program. All right? Um, as long as that lender takes the grant, they will give it to you. It's a soft second, and it's, given at, it's forgiven at year six. So you have to at least make it to year six in order for it to, to be forgiven. All right. And this one has an income limit. In other words, you have to be 80 percent or below the median income for Gwinnett County. And it goes by household size. So the, the more people in your house, the more money you can make. And you must be living in or moving to Gwinnett County. I live in Snellville. That's where everybody is somebody. That's what they say. All right, let's talk about mortgage loan requirements. And as you see, all of these have minimal credit scores. They all have the down payment requirement on how much they will give, all right? They all have who qualifies for it. Conventional is a 620 minimal credit score, three to 20% down, 100% loan product is available. And you can have a 15, 20, or 30 year loan. And the loan limits go up to 510,000, which is high for a conventional product, all right? But keep in mind that all down payment assistance will allow conventional loans. So you gotta think about that. Let's look at FHA. You can buy FHA, uh, you can get an FHA loan with a 585 minimum credit score and anywhere from three to three and a half to 10% down. Now it varies with this. With the FHA, you can do a 585, but it's more for people that have 10% down that they will allow the lower credit scores. Right now, FHA is a 640 credit score across the board with 3.5% down. There are no 100% FHA programs like it is with conventional. And they will allow for mom and daddy to give you a gift, grandmama to give you a lift, 
I mean, a gift, anybody that wants to give you uh, contributions for gift funds, they will allow it with an FHA fund, okay? A FHA loan. And the loan limits are only up to 331,000. Let's look at VA. VA, technically, you can go down to, you can start at a 580 and a 620 minimum credit score, anywhere in between there. But it's only for veterans, which we all know, but it's 100% financing. And it's great to utilize if you are a veteran in the military or out of. You must have a certificate of eligibility. Your DD-214 must have that. Um, if you don't have that, you have to go down to the VA and uh, they will issue it to you as long as you had a, 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 a discharge that was honorable. And then the loan limits are up to 484000 $350. The next one is going to be USDA. Listen, USDA is a great opportunity. It is a, a loan that is 100%. You don't necessarily have to put a lot of money into it. Their loan limits are higher. You can get up to a 38, even a 40 year mortgage, 620 minimum credit score, and you only have to put $500 in and part of the uh, process in order to qualify for this USDA loan. This tool, the USDA loan is for people that want to live in rural areas. And what you want to consider is what is a rural area. There are parts of Gwinnett that is rural. There's parts of DeKalb that is rural. There are parts of Rockdale and Newton County that is rural, that people, if you don't mind driving into the city, if that's where you work, you need to consider this USDA loan. The interest rates are great and you get a lot of props with it. All right, these are the websites to get to all of the down payment assistance program. Grab your cameras and get a snapshot real quick so that you can have these websites down. And listen, I'm doing this on the fast note, but tough me. I can go eight hours talking about home ownership because I love it, all right? You must have a sufficient down payment and that can mean the difference between renting a home and home ownership. Some people are not seeking after home ownership because they just can't save the money. But that's the purpose of down payment assistance. If you can get at least $1,000 to $2,000 in a savings account, you should go for the gusto. And go ahead on and go and take that next step into moving into home ownership. Hi, you Carmen. Can, can I interrupt you for just sure. one moment? I know you know this frontwards and backwards, and we can tell. But if you could go back to that one slide, just one slide back, by the time I grabbed my phone and my camera, you had already moved to the next one. I'm and sorry. I definitely want to capture this. This is awesome information. So just if you guys have your camera, go ahead and snap a picture. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And the, the DCA is the Georgia dream. So make sure you definitely write that one down. And of course, we the cab is the decide to cab and invest Atlanta. And then you can learn a lot about the uh, Gwinnett Home Stretch on their website. Let me know when to proceed. I think we're good. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. So savings is a means of down payment, private gifts and loans. A second piggyback loan, back in the day, there was a lot of 80-20s where you, you had a first and a second mortgage. They don't do those as much now, but that is a possibility where they allow you to have a loan to be able to make up the difference or to not have to pay mortgage insurance. And of course, you can use your 401k or your retirement account as part of a down payment. You can utilize that. And you can utilize that to show that you have emergency funds, something that you can actually uh, access in the need, in the event that you know you fall into hardship. You can show that you have that, and they'll they'll um, see that as an emergency funds or what they call reserves. Long as they see something that you can access or tap into in order to help you in the event, it looks good on paper and it helps a lender to um, actually see you in a good light. So in conclusion, we got the happy family sitting on the steps, all smiles, just purchased their home. Why home ownership? It helps build wealth through home equity. Bought my first house at 62.5, sold it at 123 within a 10 year period. Wouldn't you say that was a great return on your investment? 
you can take that home and if you don't want to sell it you can make it rental property which is the way you generate wealth and i really really um am convinced that that's the way to go is buy that first home let it build up some equity take that equity out put it down on the second home that that first home helped pay for that second home i always tell people this you don't have to hit a home run when you first start out. Just get into a home that you can live in and be comfortable in for the first five years. And then from there, you go. You can go nowhere but up. Go to your dream home as your second home and let that first home help pay for it. That's the way you build wealth. It helps to create financial stability. You don't have any rental increases. You know, if you're late, on the rent, I think it's by the third in some places, by the fifth in other places, you have to pay anywhere from $150 or more. I've heard people say they pay $300 more if they're late on their rental payment. That's ridiculous. And I know that in a home, you pay 5% of whatever the mortgage payment is, which is very minimal. So you, you're talking anywhere from like $35 or 50 in comparison to up to 300 when you're renting. So you want to, you don't have to worry about that when you're purchasing your own home. No rental increases every six months or every year. And it helps to create stable communities. I cannot impress enough how communities change for the better. The way they do that is when people like you become homeowners because you decide what happens in your own community. And as you're a decision maker, I call them stakeholders, then you can decide who comes in and who goes out. If you don't want family dollar stores or dollar trees in your neighborhood, as a stakeholder, you can prevent it. All right, now this is a call to action. Let's make home ownership happen. Yes. <laughs> Next steps. First of all, you got to decide if home ownership is right for you. It's not right for everybody. If you're ready to take on the responsibility and go ahead and make that move to increase and start generating um, generational wealth, this is the first thing you want to do is to make the decision to do so. Number two, you want to call a HUD approved housing counselor to help you along in this process and tell you everything you know you need to know the ins and outs about the loan products, your credit, and help you to get stabilized to get on your start. Order your credit report. You need to know what's on there. Listen, Credit Karma is a great tool. It's not the best tool, but it is a good one. It does help monitor your credit. Scores are not true, okay? But it's a great monitoring tool for free, and I encourage you to use it, but just don't get excited about the scores you see on there because nine times out of 10, they're not your true store scores. They could be higher and they could be lower. Complete a home buyer education class. That's where you learn all the good stuff, the ins and out, mortgage products, what the back end and front end ratios are truly about the down payment assistance program go more in debt into that and so you want to attend that and you must attend it in order to get down payment assistance all right then the next steps you want to do after you've done the first four is get approved by a lender find out how much you qualify for and then contact a real estate agent to get you out and looking right questions and answers are you ready I want my picture there. Okay. First of, <laughs> well, first of all, let's give Carney a big round of applause, even if it's silently. Carney, fantastic job. We you so, we so, so last so far. Amazing. Thank you. Okay. So, still questions are coming. So, I'm going to get to some before we lose them. Just can we, we go really back? To the, uh, one can moment. Can we go back to the last slide? I'm sure we can. Um, so as we do that, and I think I just lost one of the questions, um, Carney, we're going to get started. Take a deep breath. We got a few really terrific questions. This has been the most enthusiastic group on chat that I have ever witnessed. The first question comes from uh, someone who's currently renting and trying to determine how do I establish my budget when I'm moving from renting to home ownership? Is it wise to use what I currently pay for rent and my utilities when trying to establish how much is how much a mortgage I can afford? And to that end, when a lender is evaluating my credit worthiness, 
what do they take into consideration my rental payments and how consistent I've been on making my rental payments? Absolutely. They do take that into consideration as to how you've maintained your rental payments. And when it comes to your budget, what you want to do, because that's very important, because you live out of your net income, you want to be able to establish how much mortgage payment that you can pay comfortably with your current income, your bring home pay. So definitely that budget, you do need to take all of that into consideration because determining on the, the house size, your utility bills can go up. So you want to definitely take that into consideration. Okay, very good. Um, so here's a question I think is related to uh, the conversation about whether you could have owned property in the past and still, um, still uh, qualify for down payment assistance. What if someone received a home as a gift um, that's uh, entrusted to them in a will? Would that eliminate their, would that prevent them from being considered a first time home buyer if they have inherited property? It depends on the lender and it depends on um, whether or not, if your name is on the title, they do consider that as owning a home. So, but that, that particular um, situation will depend on the lender. You will so I would recommend have to pr prove that you did not um, have to purchase that home. I would recommend to that uh, questioner to uh, to do some further inquiry and just have a conversation about that. Another terrific question came from someone who's expecting a baby in March. All right, congratulations! And she, uh, yeah, and she wants to know how would that her, the the fact that she's pregnant with that um, how would that impact her ability to get a loan? Or close on a home, but I think she's got to get a loan first. So it, with, it, it shouldn't, as long as you're still getting income, it shouldn't affect it at all. If you're going to take like a years long maternity leave, I'm not certain how that would impact her. Most lenders are going to want her to be have returned back to work. Okay. All right. Hopefully, hopefully that helped you out. And then here was a great question uh, about refinancing once you. Uh, have participated in one of the down payment assistance programs, like specifically Georgia Dream. F supposing you have uh, you got uh, the down payment assistance about four years ago, and now you're ready to refinance. Can you do so without that in any way being penalized or or having your your down payment assistance taken away? You certainly or? can, as long as you're not taking cash out. If you're just re refinancing to to reduce the rate. You can do it with no problems. Georgia Dream will do, continue to subordinate, which means stay in second lien place. But if you're going to take money out, they're going to want to be paid back. Okay, very good. Uh, and then another question, I think it's really a repeat of the original of the earlier one about the, if you have inherited property and perhaps your name is on title with other um, with other beneficiaries, how that would impact your status as a first time home buyer. Again, I think you, uh, the, the lender will probably want proof that that's the situation. Okay, now here's some folks that are ready for some classes and they wanna know whether we can do our home buyer assistance classes via Zoom now. That is the only way we're doing them because yeah. of the fact that uh, the pandemic, we're doing them doing, uh, via Zoom. And uh, which is great. And then they also, we do also offer our online class, but you have to pay for that one. And then um, I think you, you touched on this just a little bit, but just a little bit of clarity on the notion of getting con a conventional loan and down payment assistance. I think some of our attendees know that some sellers look on conventional loans in a little bit, you know, with higher regard. So there was some question, a question about, can I get some down payment assistance and take advantage of a conventional loan. Absolutely, that, uh, like I said, Gwinnett uh, Stretch does it, uh, We the Cab will do it. And there are also lenders that participate in the Federal Home Loan Bank Down Payment Assistance Program, which will allow you to do a conventional pro, uh, program or a product and give you the down payment assistance that you need. Okay, very good. So I'm going to catch up because I got about 20 messages since I read those questions. Here's one of the things that you guys can help me with. Someone wanted to see the DeKalb County Home Buyer Program slide again. I guess that's the WE program. They wanted to get that information. And I'm not sure if that is on part of the one that everyone took a picture of. And then I will catch up a little bit. 
Okay, and this chat yeah, me. so okay. <laughs> thank you. Want me. Thank well, you. Just, you mentioned some information like you went through the different programs, like Atlanta had assistance for different things, but then you mentioned DeCab, and I just didn't quite get what can a DeCab home buyer um, take advantage of if they want to purchase a home. Well, we like DeCab. Okay, well, we DeCab, if you're in DeCab County, you definitely can take advantage of we DeCab. And again, they are for working, it's basically for working people that own, that um, earns higher incomes, but they will take anyone into the program. Um, and if you're, wherever you live, you can, as long as you're moving into DeKalb, you can utilize this program. And I'm sorry, what else did you want to know about that? Well, that's pretty much what I want to know, like, what can I look at um, program wise for a, because I already live in DeKalb, I live in Stone Mountain. So I just kind of wanted to know what is their just different programs? We DeCab is good and just something I could go to and actually look at and research. Okay, so um, We DeCab is great. Let me get back to the websites and then that way you can um, you can get those. There we go. All right, thank yes, you. That, yes, ma'am. Um, so Carter, here's a really great question. I'll speak a little bit about student loans and how that even deferment status is still considered part of your debt. Talk about how a lender evaluates those with student loans. Unfortunately, when it comes to student loans, if you're going to go FHA, FHA looks at your student loans and, will, and requires it to be counted into your debt to income ratio. So if you owe $100,000, that's $1,000 a month into your, your debt to income ratio. It must be counted in. So technically, the best way if you have student loans, especially if they're you know large amounts, you want to go ahead on and apply for the conventional mortgage. Now listen, conventional is even though they have high regards for a conventional mortgage, and the reason why uh, a seller would want a conventional uh, buyer is because they don't have to make the repairs that might be required with FHA. OK, they have two different standards. All right. FHA has requirements that basically says, hey, that roof has to be in good condition. It cannot be any rotted wood. The flooring has to be there. You know, uh, they are a little bit lenient than they used to be. But FHA requires certain things to happen in that house. And if that has to if it has to have repairs in order for FHA to insure it, they're going to want it done before you close on the house. So where the conventional bar, they just automatically assume that they can afford to make those repairs because they're going to be required to have the higher credit scores and sometimes a little, a little bit larger down payment and they might have better reserves. So they can assume that you can make those repairs. But with a student loan, you can get 100% conventional product. And here's the other thing. As long as that loan is on a repayment status, you can owe $200,000 on a student loan. But if your payment is zero in an income-based repayment plan and it shows on your credit report as a zero, the lender will take that zero payment and not count that debt into your, in, your debt to income ratio and allow you to go ahead on and, and get home ownership. Very good. Well, here's an easy one, Carney. Someone has never heard of a housing counselor. How would one go about finding We're a housing like a counselor? Jewel. Yes. So I housing you... counselors have been around a long time. Um, housing counselors became more prominent when the economic downfall happened with the real estate market it, when 2008, 9, 10, 11, and 12 happened. So what happened was is that so many people had bought homes, received down payment assistance, and when the uh, housing market crashed, a lot of people walked away from it. And if those people had have been educated or was able to get the information that they needed to not walk away from their homes, they probably would not have and the economic um, downfall would not have been as bad. So what HUD has said is that, hey, 
we're going to make this a requirement for down payment assistance program for them to understand what it takes to obtain home ownership and how to sustain home ownership. And so even if you get in trouble, we're to talk about what happens and how we can help you to stay in that home because HUD sees home ownership as the most prominent way for people to get economically stable. So they have, they they give us grant money to educate consumers about home ownership, how to obtain it and how to maintain it. Very good. So here's a couple of interesting questions from millennials and for folks who are um, who have very little rental experience. What would you recommend to folks that are just starting, I guess they're just starting their first jobs and they're trying to decide when is the right time for me? Perhaps I've only rented for a year and how will a lender look at that? And then also, Carney, what about the folks that are saying, hey, I'm gonna live with someone else and save a few bucks. How will that be um, evaluated? It will be evaluated based on your credit. <laughs> They were go they're going to look at your credit. They're going to look at your savings. And they're going to look at the fact that you can, um, you can accomplish this, that you can actually pay for this house. That's what they're going to be looking at, not the fact that you live with somebody or you just been renting for a year. They do like, they do like to have rental history because it shows how you pay. But if you've paid mom and dad rent or if you've given them a few dollars, they technically can write a letter saying that you did that and some lenders would take it. Very good. So the takeaway there, millennials, really great credit score. That is your doorway into being considered for, for home ownership. So whether you're staying with someone or renting, pay your bills on time and get that number as high as possible because it does impact the interest rate you'll receive. Um, here was an interesting question about the maximum number of grants you can apply for. Okay. I, Go ahead. And, Carol. and then the last, the, 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 it's like a two-parter, Carney. How, what's the maximum number of grants you can apply for and how long does this process take? How long does the home buying process take? Supposing my lease is up in September, how much time do I need to allocate? Okay. Now, as far as down payment assistance programs, most of them will not allow you to layer. So you can only utilize one, okay? Um, so if you're getting uh, down payment assistance from Georgia Dream, you can own, Georgia Dream definitely don't allow layering. I think We The Cab does, I, I can't remember offhand, but I believe that they do allow you to layer, but uh, you wanna be able to get gift funds. They, they will allow that even though you're getting down payment assistance. Um, the second part of the question was- How long does the process take? The process, let me just share with you because of the way the market is right now. Here's what I'm telling people to do. You wanna give yourself at least 120 days to get this process from start to finish. Hopefully you can purchase a home. I always tell people to go ahead on when you know that your lease is going to be up within the next four months, you need to be in this process because you don't know how long it's going to take you to purchase a home. Now, as far as the down payment assistance program is concerned, if when you're under contract, as long as your loan officer do everything that they're supposed to do, that's why they want participating lenders because they know the process to make sure that they get that loan package and everything and over to them so that they can approve it and get you to closing on time. But right now it's taking somewhere, I would say for an FHA loan, 35, 40 days at the most. And you can do a conventional still in 30 days as long as everything is in order. And I, I'd like to tag on to that, uh, to that question in terms of how long it takes. It really depends on the buyer and how much energy and effort and focus they wanna make towards home um, searching. I have clients that it might have taken them two years to find a home that they loved. And I have others who are more focused and more flexible and they can find a home in 30 days or, or certainly 30 to 45 days. So just bear in mind the type of person that you might be and what your requirements are. It doesn't hurt to start looking on Zillow and just sort of getting some sense once you've established what your purchasing power is, what the inventory looks like, so you can have a realistic idea going into this, you know, just, just how much time it's going to take you personally to find a home you love.
And let me share this with you, um, Carolyn, as well. Um, as far as that, if you're a picky buyer, if you're going to be picky and you're going to want a lot of things to be perfect, then you might need to take your time and it could take you up to two years. But as Carol said, if you're flexible, like I said, you don't have to hit a home run. You've got to have some vision in this market to be able to see what it can be and be able to go ahead and get in there because for every buyer right now, and every, I'm, I mean, for every house right now, it might be about 10 or 20 buyers. So you've got to you've gotta be, you know, focused and determined. And here's the other thing. Houses on the market this morning, this afternoon, they might not be. Right. Absolutely. Oh, I've got some stories about that. Um, one other just quick uh, question about FHA requiring a 640 credit score. Someone just wanted you to clarify that. I do believe there's some thought out there that you can get at FHA for less than 640. So someone just wanted you to clarify that. Okay, you can get an FHA mortgage for less than a 640 credit score. Since COVID, all lenders are requiring a 640 credit score across the board. Now, if you want down payment assistance, you're going to have to get the 640 score. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. It, it, that's it. But if you have your own money, there are lenders that will take you at the 585 credit score. There are lenders that will take you at a 600 credit score, but you must have your own down payment. What they're called is lender overlays. And what that basically means, FHA requires 585 credit score with your own down payment, but the lender that actually loans the money are the ones that says, I won't buy that paper. In other words, I won't buy the mortgage or fund it unless they have a 640 credit score. Very good. Um, so someone asked about President Biden's 15,000 homebuyer tax credit proposal. How would that help new homeowners? I'm not familiar with that one. I'm not familiar with that either. Um, I hadn't heard that one yet. But let uh -huh. me say this. Normally, when there's an incentive, it's going to help owner home buyers because it's going to give them more down payment assistance to be able to access. Just like the um, at the end of last year, August of last year, there was a Georgia Dream program that allowed fifteen thousand dollars, but there was requirements for that for that grant. You could only buy resales. You could not buy new construction. And you still had to stay in the house for five years, but it was a diminishing grant that every year diminishes by 20% and it was forgiven in year six. That could be what he's talking about, but I certainly hope that something like that comes down the pipeline. Um, so another question about apparently we got a lot of folks that are inheriting property. So would a lender be able to um, locate or see your name attached to another property if that property is in another state? So you remember when I said that there was a title insurance officer? What they do is they run a check on your social security number and they look to see if there's any liens or any encumbrances on there. So if you inherited a property, there's a possibility even in another state, it can be found because your name is tied to it. If there's a tax record, it's possible. Okay, very good. Um, so let's see, uh, regarding your initial down payment, how do you feel about borrowing from your 401k or just saving the money on your own? Saving the money on your own is always the first choice, but borrowing from your 401k is an excellent choice. Second choice, simply because you're gonna pay yourself back. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Borrowing it from your 401k is absolutely a great idea because you can also use it as reserves as well. And the thing is, is that you have to present that paperwork stating that you can borrow from it or withdraw from it because you might not want to pay yourself back. The lender is going to require that, but you can definitely do it. Um, question about do lenders use your AGI or your gross income? They use your adjusted gross income. Okay, and there was a question about whether it's cheaper to buy a home that's a new construction home versus a resale, a, re, a home that's available for resale. And I believe this person was, was told that it's cheaper to buy a new construction home. Um, I, I'd like to chime in on that one. Um, generally, um, 
new construction homes, uh, the builders have a price point to hit. So you'll find that there's very little negotiation, right? Because if, if I've got to sell 100 homes in a large subdivision, I'm going to have to maintain that same price point to maintain that same margin. I can't sell a home to Carolyn for less than I sell a home to Carney. So there's generally more flexibility in a resale environment. Absolutely. No uh, negotiations in new home sales. No negotiation. Yeah, the price offer, is what it is. Yeah, and if you're going to get into a new home subdivision, you want to get in at the beginning stages because by the time they sell 10 homes, the price is going up. Okay. And then are there any assistance programs for East Point and Hatefield? I guess Georgia Dream. Georgia Dream would be it. And you know what? That is an area that needs assistance real bad because they don't offer a lot of programs but because of the zip codes. But yeah, Georgia Dream would definitely be that. You can, um, yes, Georgia Dream is about the only one. You can okay. also do Federal Home Loan Bank if you have a lender that participates in that. Okay, I, wanna, I don't wanna forget this question because it was so lovely. Suggestions for newlyweds who hope to consolidate and buy a rural home together. You ponder that one while I catch up with the questions in the chat. So you said that they're wanting to know if they wanna buy a rural? Yeah, suggestions for newlyweds who hope to consolidate, I guess, their possessions and their assets and buy a rural home together. Now, what suggestions would you like? I mean, it's a great opportunity. Let me tell you, uh, they're asking us as housing counselors to try to convince people to buy rural simply because of the fact you're going to get more house for your money out there. You're going to get more land. And again, that loan product, that USDA loan product is an up standing product and you really, really want to look deeper into it. And so when you're consolidating your assets and everything, as long as you don't go over their income limits, you're fine. Um, there was another question about selling a home and whether you should sell to one of those um, investors that wants to just pay cash for your home versus putting it on the open market. Now, Carol, do you want to handle that one or you really want me to do it? Uh, well, I'll just, <laughs> I'll put my two cents in. I will say <laughs> that regardless of the condition of your home, putting your home on the open market is likely going to yield the best results, especially in this market, right? And I think what if you can, if you want to talk with one of those folks, that's fine, but also talk to a realtor and get a second opinion before you say yes. And let me just share this with you. And I'm going to call names. Y'all get me later. Open door, offer pad, Mark Spain. They are offering cash for your home, but they still want you to pay them a commission. You might as well get a real estate agent that's going to be honest with you about what needs to be done. Not only do they do that, they also, if they say they'll buy your home as is, they're going to take off for the amount of repairs that needs to be done. And oftentimes, if you want top dollar for them to sell your home, they're going to uh, want you to pay for the repairs as part of the process. And I know this personally, I just went through this with my neighbor. She called all of them, <laughs> Yeah, they're, you know, and I was shocked. Them. And even some of them asked for a higher commission, believe it or not, than what the going rate is. It's a bait and switch. It's definitely, it, and I Absolutely. guess I should say that. And so let me I'm, share this with you too. Okay. A real estate agent, you as the buyer, they work for you for free. The well, seller pays them, okay? Now, if you want to be able to get a new home or new construction or whatever, you need representation. That is why you need a real estate agent. And I hope that each and every one of you will inquire with one before you even get into this process well. Um, fabulous. Thank you for that, Carney. So I'm going to go back to a question that I asked early on, but I don't think that the answer was uh, clear enough, and I just don't want to leave this person hanging. They were asking, how do you establish what your budget is for the mortgage? And they're asking, literally, is it wrong to assume that you can take what you pay in apartment rent, apartment insurance, and utilities and think, I'm just going to put that in my monthly mortgage payment? And I certainly think that's going to be one element of your monthly mortgage payment, but one also has to consider what, how am I going to, where am I going to get it, my down payment from, right? right? To pay the down payment on that mortgage and potentially any closing costs that aren't covered by the seller. 
Is there anything else you can add to that, Carney? Because I think I let that person down. Okay, so with that being said, um, as far as your budget is concerned, what you're paying for rent, because we often say you can, what you're paying for rent, you could pay less in a mortgage. You might have to pay more depending on what your expenses actually are. Now, the lender is going to go by your gross income, all right? As a housing counselor, we show it to you both ways. We show you what you qualify with your gross income, and then we take and we put your, your proposed mortgage payment into your budget and show you what that looks like and see if you have any surplus at the end of the month because they're going to go by your gross. Now, there's what we call a debt-to-income ratio. That debt-to-income ratio goes up to a certain percentage of your uh, gross income, and it has to include your mortgage payment which, uh, and your debt. So if you have a card note and credit cards, so let's put it this way. If your mortgage payment is $900 and your car payment and your credit cards is $500, that gives you a $1,400 debt-to-income uh, amount, okay? So that $1,400 cannot exceed, and let's do FHA, it cannot exceed 43% of your income. So what you would do is your gross income, you can use your income taxes and your or your annual amount divided by 12 and then multiply it by 43% and then take away the amount that's your debts, which you pay for your car note and credit cards, and then what's left over is what your mortgage payment should be. I hope that was helpful. Um, here's an interesting question about verification of employment. Um, is a verification of employment important to have up front or are two W-2s okay? Two years, they're gonna do a verification of employment. We call it a VOE, they're gonna do it regardless. And if you've had multiple jobs in those two years period, you're gonna to need to list them all because they need to show a two year history. Okay, very good. Question about rent to own programs, pros and cons. Um, uh, go ahead, I, Carol. I will work, I, I work with one investor and they're not rent to owns, but they're lease with an option to purchase. And you essentially are able to lease homes and pay just a regular rent for up to five years and anytime during that five years, you can purchase that home. And it's all very upfront and it all, you know, details at what, how much you will pay for that home at, at any given point. I think the pro to that is if you're someone who perhaps cannot qualify for a mortgage now, but you do have some income because you'll have to pay like a couple of months um, of your uh, security, rental security and all of that. If you're able to do that, just as you're working towards increasing your credit score so that you can apply for a loan, I can see the positives in that you might find a property that you really love, right? And if you're very close to being able to get a mortgage, you can take on some of that appreciation that's happening in the Atlanta market because that investor is going to charge you a little bit of an upside. Of course, they're gonna make some money um, when you get ready to purchase it, but it might even out a little bit it, given the way the, the, uh, the market is increasing in Atlanta. However, if you are a person who can get approved for a mortgage, I would always recommend moving forward and making the purchase. The other positive of that is if you're moving to a new city and you just want to sort of try out an area or a location before you make the commitment, I think that's also a good pro for a uh, rent to own. Okay, and let me see. I think I have 10 new messages. Thanks everybody. You're doing great with your questions. I'm trying to read them as quickly as possible. Um, do you think, so there were, there were questions also, Carney, about um, down payment assistance in other counties like Henry County and I think maybe Rockdale. I don't know, don't know that there are specific programs just for those counties or if it's just part of it. Unfortunately, they do not have a, a, a down payment assistance program that I know of that will, you would be covered by Georgia Dream. And keep in mind also that Henry County is considered one of the affluent counties. Um, and so you would need to do federal home loan bank uh, uh, down payment assistance and that lender needs to be participating in that or you would need to do Georgia Dream. Okay, here's a really good question. Uh, for a couple making a purchase, can one employment history be leveraged with the other higher credit score for approval? 
how do you evaluate a couple? So a couple is going to be evaluated. They both have to meet the minimum credit requirements. They both have to. And as far as income, it doesn't matter if they're purchasing together. I always advise that if it's possible, one should buy the house and they, uh, based on their income if they can. And that way you can also, again, we're talking about making the case for home ownership and generating wealth. Then the second one can buy an investment property. However, if you wanted to buy a home together, both names on it, then you both have to at least meet the minimum credit requirements. Okay, very good. Um, here's an interesting question. Um, suppose someone is moving out of state into Georgia. Are there state resident requirements for the down payment assistance for programs? Must you be a Georgia resident for a certain amount of time? No, as long as you are not, you do not own a home in the other state, you can utilize the down payment assistance program. Okay. So how do you, how, people want to know, how do we sign up for home buyer classes, Carney? Go to www.morningstarurbandevelopment.org. We have classes every month. Please repeat that www.morningstarurbandevelopment.org. Okay, very good. Or and you can go to hud.gov and, and, and um, Google housing counselors. Okay, very good. Um, okay, so someone wanted to see the, F, uh, the USDA and the FHA slide again. So, and here's a question um, that I'm often asked. If I'm currently renting and I purchase a home, will I be able to break my lease? Well, I would suggest that you find out what the penalties are for breaking your lease before you start looking for a home, because there they likely are. And some, some penalties are much more reasonable than others. So don't be surprised. Go ahead and find out on the front end what the penalties are. I concur. <laughs> uh, let's see. There was one question about the program Divi. Good to lease for three years and then buy or decide to sell and keep your equity. Can you have a co-signer or someone else on the title? I'm not at all familiar with Divi. I'm so sorry. Are you familiar with Divi? Never heard D -I -B -B -Y, of it. Divi Y, it's an acronym for something. Do you think the program is good to lease for three years and then buy and keep your equity? I think it really goes back to that whole notion of you know, are lease to purchase programs good? Or what are the pros and cons? And for some families, it's really good. I have worked with clients who have used those programs and then ultimately when they were in a better position, purchased the home that they had been living in for a couple of years. So it really depends on your particular, you know, financial situation and your lifestyle. This person wanted to be in a certain school district. And so she, that was the way that she achieved that goal. Let's see, with student loans on moratorium, if you've decided to be in forbearance, this is definitely for you, Carney. With student loans on, on for moratorium, if you've decided to be in forbearance, will they still count the past amount as debt or will it count as zero payment? It will, if you were making student loan payments before the moratorium came in, they're going to look at that particular payment and count it into your debt to income ratio. If you are on an income based repayment plan and that payment was zero, then they're going to look at that. But keep in mind with FHA, it does not matter if you're paying it or not paying it. They will look at it as 1% of the amount and they're going to count that into your debt to income ratio. And unfortunately, if your credit score is not where it needs to be at the point of being able to purchase a home, which is that 640, that's that's the golden number, um, ladies, it's the golden number, um, then you could be held up from purchasing a home if you're trying to do FHA. So go ahead on and just get the number, get the credit score. Okay. How about this? If married and I have a better credit score, can I just purchase under my name? Absolutely. If your husband agree with it. <laughs> And here's the thing, you can purchase it. I have clients do this all the time. Well, several I've had do this, um, especially if you have the income, but you can always put your husband's name on the title. You, you just can always go on the title. And let me just say this, and I hope I don't get in trouble for that. I've been doing real estate and mortgages and doing what I'm doing for almost 24 years. And I have sold more homes to women. <laughs> I don't know why it is. And then the other thing is, is that for some reason, women credit scores are higher than men. 
I've been married 36 years and my credit score has consistently ran higher than my husband's. Well, shout out to all the men with good credit scores. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm not going to touch that with a, a 10 foot. Oh, yeah. But, um, but men have good credit scores and I just don't know why the women's just run higher. But I'm just saying that's just been the case. And, and with all due respect, sometimes it takes them a little longer to get it together. <laughs> okay. So someone wants to know outside of Zillow, what are some good outlets to look for homes? You can always go to realtor.com, which is what I recommend because it's real time. Stay away. Zillow is good and realtor.com is good. Yeah, they're, they're both good. Um, what is, okay, so here are, I think we just answered this question. Can a house be bought by just one spouse? So I think we've answered that. Here's a good question. What is Federal Home Loan Bank? Federal Home Loan Bank is a, a it has to do with the Federal Reserve. And there are banks that are um, that have a affiliation with them, and they are FDA insured banks normally, and they are a uh, down payment assistance program. They allow a certain amount of money to those particular banks for home ownership. And listen, uh, we didn't talk about federal home loan. Um, bank. That's because it's lender specific. It's not necessarily a program, but it is assistance. And um, they just increased their loan limits. I mean, their um, down payment assistance limits. So it used to be five thousand. It's now seventy five hundred. And if you are one of the uh, healthcare professionals, frontline workers, it's up to ten thousand dollars now. They just did that this month. As we're going into the next question, if someone would put Carney's uh, information back on the screen, someone has asked for that, and that'll probably be helpful. Uh, here's a really good question about folks that are self-employed. How do lenders evaluate self-employment income? You're going to need two years of tax returns. They take the total of your adjusted gross income, and they average the two. And that'll be how much money you, I mean, how much house you qualify for based on your debt to income ratio. Okay. If you pay off credit cards, are they still considered a payment that will be included in your debt to income? No, they do account? not. Nor will, if you, if you pay any debt under 10 months, it's not considered into your debt to income ratio. Okay, very good. And then someone's asking, can I apply for FHA and conventional? Which one would you recommend? I will, I will, it really depends on what your other needs are as it relates to down payment assistance. If that is a need of yours, then you're probably better off with the FHA loan. Um, because as Carney mentioned earlier, FHA loans are required for most of these programs. However, if you don't, I would recommend conventional just purely from a, uh, a marketing standpoint and from a sales standpoint, sellers are just more attracted to the uh, conventional. It'll put you in a more advantageous situation. Uh, who can we get to write an LOA explanation to the lender? A I don't LO, know. LOA, I have never heard of that. Are they talking about a, a, LO, a, a letter of explanation? I, it's a, it, they indicated LOA, so I don't okay. know. I have no um, idea what that is either. <laughs> so if you can put some more information about what a LOA is, we'll do our best to answer it. I'm talking really fast now because our event's supposed to be over in 15 minutes and we have a few other things, but this is so fabulous. We want to get to as many as we can. I'm thinking, Rochelle, we'll stop at uh, 10 till 8. Is, would that give us enough time? Um, as Rochelle lets me know that. When, yes, when is the CAVERS, yes. okay. when is the CAVERS, C -A -I -V -E -R -S, system used and how can I find out if I am in it? Okay, CAVERS. so the CAVERS, the CAVERS is used when you are applying for any government loan. And that's going to be if they're, what they're looking for is if you have had any, if you owe the federal government student loans or if you've ever been foreclosed on. Okay, um, my father, who is a senior, is putting my name down on his home title. Will this show up as me having a home when it comes to qualifying for a home separately? I'm wondering no, if there's more. As long as it, it, it might, but as long as it's explained that he has you down there just for actually air 
a situation or just the, in case something happens to him, you want you to be able to do what you need to do with the home. That's all. Okay. I change jobs every two years, but each job pays me more. Does that count against me? No. 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 As long as you're going oh, up in yeah. income, that's a blessing. What about more money for retiree from federal government? And I am reading that question verbatim. What about more money for retiree from federal government? I don't know. You mean as far as down payment assistance, there's no more money. You, okay. It, it all's the same. Which, which credit bureau score is close to what the lender actually uses? What's okay. a good site to see all the scores? Okay, so you cannot get your credit score, your true score, uh, uh, but one of two ways. You have to pay for them. Um, if you come to a HUD housing counseling agency, we do a soft pull. We get all three scores and it's very close to what the lender uh, requires. They go by your middle score. Doesn't matter which bureau, it'll be your middle score. Okay, back to that LOA question. That was in fact letter of explanation. Okay, yes. How does Just, one get one when you're paying off a bill? When you're paying off a bill, are you wanting a letter that says that you've paid the bill off? Then you can get that directly from that creditor. And in, you will have to write a letter of explanation if it shows up on your credit report as a collection. So the, especially with an FHA mortgage, you will probably have to write an F, uh, a letter of an explanation. Okay, guys, I'm sorry, my chat went all the way to the top and now I'm trying to get it to go back down to the bottom. So and Carolyn, we are at almost at time. So it looks like we're finishing most of the questions, but if we have a well, couple more, we'll be right at 7.50. All right, I'm trying to get to the very bottom. We've got the, it's my chat just keeps scrolling back up. While I do this, do you wanna spin the wheel one more time, TK? Let me see if there's any like burning questions that I missed. Oh, sure. there, there was a question about what about a bankruptcy? And I think people are curious, how long does that stay on your credit report, bankruptcy? Okay, if it's a chapter 13, you can buy a house one day out of a chapter 13. If it's a chapter seven, it's two years of FHA and three years for conventional. Very good. Uh, I think we're at the end. I'm gonna, TK, if you wanna spin the wheel, I'll see if there's anything left, but I think we got them all. Thank you everyone for being so wonderful and so patient and for all your terrific questions. And an amazing job, Carolyn, for fielding all of that. Carney, that information wow. was so amazing. Thank you both so much. Um, and I will just remind everyone, we posted a survey link in the chat. Please fill out the survey, give us your feedback, let us know what we can, what subjects we can provide information on in the future. So yes, we'll bring up and get this last, let me share my screen with you all. Oh, four new messages. <laughs> They do, Carney, want to know what particular class do they sign up for when they go on your website? How did, uh, what's it called? It's, it should say upcoming class, should, um, under classes and trainings, it should be the first one, upcoming class. That's for the one that's every month. And then there's one that if you are like under contract or need to get it in a hurry, it's an online link underneath that one. Okay, hopefully everybody got that. It's the very first class you see when you go on that link. It's a drop down that gives you the months and we normally put them on there three months at a time. Got it. Thank okay, you. And I'm going to spin the wheel. If there's anything else, you all share uh, the last questions just in case it takes us a couple of rounds. Is my name on that wheel? <laughs> <laughs> no. I have Rowanna. Rowanna S. Rowanna S. Are you with us this evening? All right, we're moving on, moving on, because we're at time and we want to have time to appreciate the folks who've uh, put this together this evening. We'll give it one more, one more go. A lot of names. <laughs> There's my name, yes. Oh That's my gosh. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> How did you do that? Speak it into being, right? Hey. How <laughs> about that? Hilarious. I think that's a great place to end the wheel. Thank you, Carney, <laughs> for all your information. And that's awesome. 
I'll pass this over to Rochelle and Pamela is uh, Carolyn, if you all have your closing remarks. That's Carney, amazing. Carney, if you could go back to your screen and share our sponsor spotlight, Carney has the screen and we will share again her screen to share with everyone who our sponsors were for tonight. So look at that. One of our sponsors was not only our soror, but a very experienced realtor. So let's everyone give a virtual hands up to Carolyn Lake. You did a fantastic job fielding those questions and answering the questions and just all of the contributions that you've added during this whole process. It's been wonderful working with you. And I look forward to more because you really, really pulled your weight on this. So oh, I you appreciate so it. You're the best, Rochelle. Thank you. It's been fun. All right. And our next sponsor spotlight was none other than, can you believe it? Our presenter today was also one of our sponsors. Can I just say this young lady dropped the mic? I need someone to put in the room, put in the chat, knowledge is power. I need somebody to type that for me. Knowledge is power. Oh yes, I see it, I see it. Can someone also put in the chat, she did that, she did <laughs> that. Carney, thank you so much on behalf of, and let me get to share my screen if I can. And hold on one moment, let me just share my screen. Carney, on behalf of Delta Sigma Theta Stone Mountain Alumni Chapter, we would like to say thank you. We want to present to Carney Mahoney, Morning Star Urban Development Incorporated. Thank you so much for your thank participation. Thank you. How awesome is that? Hitting the jackpot in 2021 through Home Ownership Seminar, awarded to you today, January the 28th. 2021. This is on behalf of our full chapter and especially our chapter president, Ms. Danette Battle, and our chair of economic development, Ms. Pamela Harris Jenkins. On behalf of our entire chapter, we salute you and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part. I really appreciate it. All right, and so with that, I will turn this mic and this event over to our chair, Pamela Harris Jenkins. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Carney. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Rochelle. Awesome job. At this time, I would be remiss if I didn't give our chapter president an opportunity to thank you in person, Carney, and everyone else on the team. We in economic development, we're always looking for ways to uplift our community. This is one way we know home ownership is the beginning of wealth and how to grow it and appreciate it. We want it to be a lifelong lesson. So we are the committee that likes to teach people how to fish. So yes. with that, you have been part of our fishing expedition, Carney, and we will welcome you as an honorary member of Stone Mountain's Economic Development Committee at any time. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yes, I concur with that, Carney. <laughs> we thank you so very much for sharing that wealth of information. And one of the points I'm going to take away from this is the very first slide you show as far as the generational gap, as far as home buying. So, and it, it shows you the gradual decline. And as you um, saw, Pamela Harris Jenkins stated, we have to realize too, if nothing else, and unless this is last COVID, we should know the disparities that minorities, brown people of color are undergoing and it's just brought it to light what we already knew all along. So with home buying, you do get into wealth building, individual wealth building. So I hope if nothing else, we all take away a point about as far as building our individual wealth. Again, thank you, Carney. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Pamela Harris Jenkins, TK and Michelle. Our hostess with the mostess, thank you so very much. And to all of the guests, I do hope that you also would take this away with you and share the information because you know we, we can't just hold on to it. We have to share it. 
So, because we want to build a strong community as a whole. But again, thank you all so very much. Be safe out there. And I'll turn it back over to a very, very astute and well-loved chair, Pamela Harris Jenkins of Economic Development. Thank you, Danette. Please be on the lookout. We will be posting uh, a recording of this program to the chapter's YouTube page. So stay connected with SMLAC, hashtag. We're on every social media. And since I don't know much about it, I'm going to stop here. Okay. <laughs> if you're, if you're, okay. you're speaking of, we have to also extend thank you to our um, technology chair, sorry, Deborah McLeod. She's a, she does this every time. And she put out the survey. I think, yeah, she's showing the survey. So we hope you take advantage of that and take the survey. So you let us know how we're doing. Thank you. Awesome. If there's nothing else, again, thank you all for attending. Look forward, look, stay tuned to SMLAC's website where we're always doing exceptional jobs in all areas of our community. Our five point programmatic thrust is alive and well and online. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Thank you all again. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank good you. Night. Don't forget about the service.